Well, we are a little short this afternoon, but I expected that. We had, uh, as you heard the announcements today, a lot of people who are ill and uh, not uh, and had other conflicts. And I know that Gary and Jeannie and all their family, I think, had uh, a program in, in Clinton today to go to. And, and uh, so there's a lot, a lot of things going on, but I, I appreciate you being here. I'll, I'll, I'll try to honor your time uh, well this afternoon. Uh, we're in Hebrews chapter 11, but we've taken a detour for the last couple of weeks a little bit. And in Hebrews chapter 11, the subject is about faith, and when you talk about faith, you're talking about the ability to stay with what you're committed to. That's what the writer of the book of Hebrews wants people to do. And I've kind of fallen in love with that one statement of verse 6 in Hebrews chapter 11 where it says, without faith it's impossible to please God. It's the second part that I have fallen in love with kind of. Because he that comes to God must what? Believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. To me those are kind of magic words. The problem is that I have felt that if we're not careful, we make this thing of faith and, and, and the life associated with faith feel like it has to be absolutely perfect. And there are examples permit, used in Hebrews chapter 11 that when I measure myself directly by those examples, I come up feeling what? Can I feel short? And, and so I can walk away over and over again if I'm not careful, thinking I, I, I can't be that. Now, I know the story of Noah is really important. I think it's really, really important because it shows God's condemnation of sin. It also shows God's willingness to save people. But what I I read about Noah and what has been emphasized all of my life, as long as I can remember, that Noah built the ark, how? Exactly like God told him to. And it makes it sound like that, that Noah never in any way ever faltered. And... And I just kind of feel like people can't be like that. So then we move from Noah into Abraham, and Abraham is the one of whom it's, this faith thing is spoken more. It's, it's, he's, he's, he's the one that's upheld more. He's the one that's written more about in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. It's when I look at the life of Abraham, and I don't intend to study with us on Sunday afternoons here for a while, the life of Abraham, but it's when I look at Abraham that I see what appears to be real in living a life before God. And what seems to be not only real, but attainable. And what I read about Abraham feels like, that sounds like me once in a while. Now, I'm not trying to say that I have faith like Abraham, but at least gives me encouragement. Because am I right in saying that every one of us has those sinking feelings once in a while about how we come up short in this world of faith? Do we all have those sinking feelings? Well, I want to look at Abraham enough to show you how God honored his faith, called him by such great words in Hebrews chapter 11, and yet what life was really like. So we'll look with me briefly at at Genesis chapter 15. We've already seen Abraham in a, what what seems to be a spectacular way, leaving the land of his father according to God's promise and going to another land, even though he did not know where he was going. And, And we've seen God keeping his promise of blessing him. But we've also seen Abraham in the midst of a famine, which which that surprises you a little bit, doesn't it? Because God said, I'll bless you and I'll take care of you. You kind of got this idea that Abraham never has a bit of trouble in his life. And yet in the land where he's living, there's a what? There's a drought. 
There's a famine. Just like in my life and in your life, in some sense or shape, there are droughts and there are famines, are they not? And it's so bad that he has to leave again and go to Egypt. But when he gets to Egypt, what does this great man of faith look like? Well, it's not so pretty, is it? I mean, he's entering into Egypt and he's getting a little bit afraid here. And he says, Sarah, you're a pretty good looking lady still. And if that king, our Pharaoh, sees you, he's going to want you to be his wife. And all he's going to do is kill me and he can have you. Let's just tell him and tell everybody you're my sister. <laughs> you know, and you think, what, what kind of guy is this? What, what kind of words are those? What, you know, it, it, and, and, yet, and yet, God does not give up on Abraham. And I have been around some people who tend to say, preach, think, and talk about that God gives up on us so easily when we mess up. I just hope that's not true, and I don't believe it's true. Everybody understand that? I do not believe God gives up on us easily. So in chapter 15, he's been blessed. Lot has gotten in trouble. He's gone to get Lot. He's, he's had some successes. But in chapter 15, verse 1, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. I think that's an interesting statement. He's already had the promise, anybody who curses you, I'll what? I'll curse. Now, wouldn't, wouldn't that be something, to walk around knowing that's going to happen? <laughs> you really want to mess with him, Ron? <laughs> Tell you what God's going to do to you. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 that would be some kind of a promise. And yet, God is reaffirming here. And, and, and I will tell you that we all need to be reaffirmed over and over and over again. I call it encouragement. Do we all need to be encouraged over and over and over again? And the reason is, yes, everybody's saying yes. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, everybody needs encouragement because life is hard. And there are all kinds of messages that Satan prepares for us in this world that make us get discouraged. So here comes God, reaffirming to Abraham, don't be afraid. I am your shield, and I am your very great reward. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Those are beautiful words. We could camp there for a while. But listen to how Abraham talks now. But Abram said, O oh, sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the only one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer, Eliezer, whatever his name is, of Damascus. And Abraham said, you've given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. <laughs> what, what, what kind of words are those? Now just, just, just think about those words. What kind of words are those? Maybe a little ungrateful, maybe a, maybe a little bitter. Do you think he's a little discouraged at this moment? Because if the, the part of that promise that apparently got his attention more than anything else was not that I'll make your name great, although that was probably pretty special, not that I'll bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you, but through your what? Your, your, your child, all the families of the earth be blessed. God sets him up with this promise that he couldn't quite understand. But it's going to be the fact he's going to have a child, and that child is going to have some far-reaching ramifications, and we know that we're here today because of that promise of God, right? Because who are we really talking about? Who is it that blesses the world today? Who is God using to bring people to him today? Jesus. This is all about a promise about Jesus. But at this moment in time, apparently several years have passed, and yes, he's got a lot of money. And yes, he's been able to go out and do some battle, although he's probably not a fighting man, and he won the battle on behalf of Lot. But there's no child. 
There's no child. That part of the promise hasn't come true. And because that part of the promise hasn't come true as of yet, how is he feeling? God, God just says, I'm your very great reward. <laughs> you don't need to be afraid. And what's his next words? Well, does, does it sound to you like he's whining a little bit? Does it sound to you like he's complaining a little bit? Okay, now, yeah, he, he, maybe he's not understanding it properly because the time, so much time has passed. You know, does anyone here ever complain? Now, I can tell you that's one thing I never do. Okay? And I never whine. Okay? Sue, Sue's, Sue's can give testimony. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, just give me an acre of pain and see what happens to me, okay? <laughs> Let's get the real Ken before you. If you give, give me an acre of pain and see what happens. But listen to his words. O oh, sovereign Lord. Now, he's recognizing that God is what? When you use the word sovereign, you're recognizing what? He has complete rule. He's got complete power. He, he, everything is within his control. So he's recognizing that God is God. That's not the problem. What can you give me since I remain childless? And I'll tell you what's about to happen. I got all this money. I got all these sheep. I got all these donkeys. And you know who's going to get it all? It's going to be a servant in my household. Uh, <laughs> do you see how he's talking? Uh, you would think by looking at some stories and some scripture that God would look at him and do what? Wipe him out. That's exactly right. Because he got really, really frustrated with the children of Israel when they would act like that. O only they didn't start it by saying, Oh, sovereign Lord. They didn't start it by saying, I know you can do anything. But if you don't hurry up and give us a child... That, that crazy servant of mine over there is going to get everything I got. <laughs> everything you've given me. You, 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 see, you see how he's talking? Now, my point is, does that not sound just like us? Does that not sound just exactly like us? So if, if, you ha if I were going to stand here in some pristine way and make you think you it's, it's perfection, it, it's... I could make everybody feel guilty and, and small and inadequate. Don't you hate the, word, the feeling of being inadequate? You just, and we often feel like that. That's how Saul, as he becomes queen, king, feels what? Inadequate. But I don't like to be made to feel like that all the time. Do you? And I don't want a preacher telling me that all the time. And yet, here is a man that God loves with, with, I would say, all his might. I don't know if that's true. But he loves him dearly. He's going to bless him. He's going to work his plan. Now, I don't know why. Now, listen very carefully to this. I don't know why God waits so long. Don't you wish God would just do it now? That's my personality. I'm the impulsive one. Remember, everybody remember that? When I, I want it done, I want it done when? I want it done now. I, I have other people I, I know in life that just willing to wait and willing to think and willing to put it off and willing to, you know, just, just in, in, in due time, they'll get it done. Well, in due time, I'm already run, run around the block four times. I'm, I'm ready to go. Well, maybe Abraham's like that. Maybe Abraham's saying, well, God, you've left out one of the big parts of this promise. What am I going to do? Give this all to a, a slave over here? Uh, and yet God comes back. Now watch the kindness of God. Watch the love of God. But then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir but a son 
coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look at the heavens, count the stars, if indeed you could count them. Now, isn't that clever? Isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that so neat? God said, Look, Abraham, you are going to have a son. You are going to have a son. And I want you to go outside and just take a look at something. Just look at the stars. I want you to count them, if you could. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. In other words, Abraham, you're worried about a child? I am going to give you a child. And through that child, look, 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 at, all, look, at, look at the heavens. You can't count the stars. It's impossible. By the way, no one ever to live on this earth has been able to count all the stars. Do you know that? No one. They can't even find them all. Every time they get a little better telescope, they find more. But I'm going to give you children of this kind of number. And so look at the next statement. Abraham believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. Uh, isn't that a loud verse? Abraham believed the Lord, and God credited it to him as righteousness. God said, I place upon you my righteousness because Abraham believed what God said and was willing to continue. But he has a moment where he's what? Doubtful. That's exactly the right word. He's doubtful. And so doubtful always brings discouragement. And it can bring despair or depression, as Joyce mentioned in our Bible class this morning. He has that moment when he's looking around and thinking, this is just not going to work out right. But he talks to God about it. So what do I learn from all that? I learn what it means to be human. I learn that we're not God. And I know that we get discouraged. And we begin to wonder. But I know that God is a God who continues to reaffirm us. He comes right back to Abraham and says, Abraham, you're going to get a child. Hold on, you're going to get a child. And that child's going to bring more children in your lineage. Look at the stars. Do you see how God's doing this? Uh, what, what a beautiful thing for God to understand our plight as we try to live in a corrupt world. And as we try to live in a world that's imperfect. And as we try to keep remembering that He is the sovereign Lord of this universe and beyond. And we confess that and we admit that. And He steps right back in to keep reaffirming and keep strengthening. So that I keep going. So that I don't be like these Hebrews to Christians that He's been writing to. And I, I go... I, I, See, when you get in this spot, I'll quit right here, but when you get in this spot and you're discouraged and, and you haven't got a child yet, what, what do you kind of want to do? What's the natural tendency? I'm done. I'm done. It, I tried. I tried. I'm going to take my sheep. That's good enough. I'm done. But Abraham believed God about that star deal, and he was credited to him for righteousness. That's what, I, 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 I'm going to spend one more Sunday with it. But I want you to see this very thing, the progression of Abraham. The progression of Abraham is how he is growing in his faith. Is there not a progression in our lives? 
is your is your confidence in God? This is the message. Is your confidence in God and your loyalty to God and your willingness to say, Sovereign Lord, your control of everything, greater today than it was 20 years ago? Is it greater today than it was 20 years ago? Is it greater today than it was 40 years ago? And I have to say, there's no comparison. There's no comparison. And yet, guess what? Today, in 2020, halfway through February, I can identify still with what Abraham just got through saying. (laughs) It still feels just like vintage Ken Jones. Okay? And that's why I need your encouragement, and you need my encouragement, and you need each other's encouragement, and we need to listen to God as to how he handles people who really deep down love him. Okay, thanks for spending a little bit of time this afternoon.